live in a clock ticking world at a breakneck pace, trying to accomplish overwhelming tasks day after day. This Lent, we invite you to fast from hurry and fast from worry, to come and find a quiet center. In the next few minutes, we observe Ash Wednesday as the beginning of the Lenten season. We're gathering online because the weather is preventing us today from safely gathering in person, but it cannot keep us from praying together. I invite you in this moment to simply take a deep breath. Now, imagine if you are not wearing a watch or if there isn't a clock in the room or you're not carrying a phone. How does that make you feel? not to have a watch or a clock or a phone. Does it make you feel wonderful? Does it make you feel anxious? Does it make you feel free? Or do you feel a little lost? In this moment, I invite you just to notice how you are feeling with the idea of no clock or no watch or, or no phone around you. As Lent begins, let these few moments be a sign of the commitment to give ourselves a break, to give ourselves just a moment to catch our breath, to give ourselves time in God's attention. Let us pray together. Forgiving God, we're not sure that we can slow down. Help us make room for you. We have too often crowded you out, too busy even to make a change. Help us find room for you. We come to you wanting it to be different. Let us be room for you. In the name of Jesus, who invites us all to wholeness. Amen. Amen. The Gospel of Matthew records the words of Jesus speaking to the crowds who all gather together to hear his teaching. And the Gospel of Matthew reads such as this, Jesus said, be especially careful when you are trying to be good so that you don't make a performance out of it. It might be good theater, but the God who made you will not be applauding. When you do something for someone else, don't call attention to yourself. You've seen them in action, I'm sure the play actors, I call them, treating prayer meeting and street corner alike as a stage, acting compassionate as long as someone else is watching, playing to the crowds. They get an applause, well that's true, but that's all that they get. When you help someone out, don't think about how it looks. Just do it, quietly and unobtrusively. That is the way your God, who conceived you in love working behind the scenes, helps you out. And when you come back before God, don't turn that into a theatrical production either. All these people making a regular show out of their prayers, hoping for 15 minutes of fame. Do you think God sits in a box seat? Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so that you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can imagine. The focus will shift from you to God, and then you'll begin to see his grace. The word of God for God's people. If we were together in person today, which is always our hope, we would have invited you to receive ashes on your forehead. It's a traditional sign of Ash Wednesday, a mark of humility. It's also a reminder that Lent leads us toward the cross, first the cross of Good Friday and Jesus' crucifixion, but ultimately the cross of Easter and the resurrection and Jesus being resurrected from death. Now, I suppose there's a small measure of courage, maybe even a bit of self-consciousness, to receive ashes smudged on your forehead, particularly if you were returning to work or seeing friends afterward. But then again, like any practice of the Christian faith, it's not intended to be a show for someone else, as we heard in the scripture that Amy just shared from the Gospel of Matthew. Like any practice of Christian faith, it's intended to be a spiritual step that we take ourselves. 
In Lent, we are reminded to give priority to Christ's invitation for our lives, not just the demands or expectations that the world around us places upon us. So this spring, we at the Cargill Church are focusing our Lenten observation around the theme, busy, reconnecting with an unhurried God. Jesus models a way of living that mingles the physical with the spiritual and acknowledges that our bodies, just as temples, house the spirit of God. And this holistic life involves a living with the rhythms that allow us to thrive and finding a balance between work and play, rest and reflection. Jesus calls his followers to more than just unbridled consumption or production, but rather the Bible sees our lives and bodies as gifts that should be nurtured. There's nothing on its face that's wrong necessarily with being busy. We in the church often find ourselves busy. Busy can be good as long as it's productive and life-giving and good for your soul and the soul of others. The cost is when it becomes a measure of worth, to get points for productivity, collecting accomplishments, of having and being more. Then it actually limits our self-esteem our physical health, our enjoyment of life, and connecting to one another. We'll put a link in this video to some resources to help give you a new perspective on being busy this Lenten season. If you were to receive ashes today, we would have drawn them in the shape of the cross on your forehead saying these words, repent and believe in the good news of the gospel. Repent means to turn, not in shame, but away from that which leads to dead ends and frustration, and turn toward that which gives life. Are you familiar with the concept of timeout? (laughs) Children are sometimes given a timeout when they need to settle down or when they need to rethink their behavior. Or in sports, a timeout is taken when we need to, when the team needs to reconnect and think more about their strategy. Or one might simply call a a timeout to take a rest, to catch their breath. We give or we take a timeout when we need a break. What if we were to take a daily timeout during Lent and consider this to be a positive step towards spiritual growth? Maybe there's a place in your home that has a comfortable chair or catches a ray of sunshine or basks in quiet candlelight in evening. Maybe there's a a favored place in nature, in a park, someplace on your way to and from work. Maybe you're even blessed in your workplace for a, a quiet gathering corner. Is there a place you can identify where you can go to let go of the things that you don't need or weighing you down? a place that you can visit for even a short time each day. Whether or not it's an actual chair, we invite you to go to your prayer chair during this season of Lent for a a brief time out. We'll be talking about the prayer chair and these time out opportunities in these next several weeks as we gather in weekend worship in the season of Lent. We hope that you might find time each day and give yourself a time out in a prayer chair, a chance just to to simply let go, to be in God's presence, to ask God to hold you and all you hold dear. You can be silent, you can read, you can write down your thoughts, whatever it is that you do during this time out. Find a place and create a moment where nothing is expected of you. Find that place, that time, where you can find your quiet center. May this journey that we take together change your way of thinking and being. May this journey open you to more loving, more living, and more thriving. May you know deeply that there is time enough for you, for your relationships, for your work, and for prayer. And may you be reacquainted each day 
with an unhurried God who is calling you to dive deeply into love.